Right now you're building some big engines, some small engines, and filling a lot of spaces, and more important, showing up on a lot of airframes. How many engines do you have now in circulation? It's a thousand plus now, after all these years, yeah. That, so that's that's an amazing number. Yeah, it is. And uh, um, close to, it's probably 70, 80 a year, the last few years. We tried always to do everybody. You know, I have molds galore all over my uh, lofts in the hangar. We have a mold for pretty much every home built there ever was for a cowling. Mm -hmm. We looked at the numbers one year and said, you know, we're working our butts off mm -hmm. and we're selling one or two to this company or this type of plane and we're selling five to that and but we're selling 90 percent to Zenit. So we started, like, why are we doing this? And we ended up focusing and in fact now we're the primary engine that goes into Zenit airplanes. We don't ever hear the term alternative anymore when it comes to a Zenit. It's the main engine people choose when they build a, a Zenit airplane, is the Viking. What is it that people need to know about what you're doing to get past the older days of the experimenters that got 50% through a project and started selling Im immediately without really proving their stuff, which kind of really hurt the industry for the longest time. You know, I started out too, Subarus, many, many years ago. I had success with a lot of those, and I had some failures out there. But that was also in an era where people were more set up for tinkering, working with engines, not mining, making some brackets, hoses, things like that. In today's world, people want to turn key. They want to customize the plane to be their creation, but they're not willing to go to the extent of, the, of what they used to. So I think that anyone that's building something now that is not a complete turnkey package with instructions and videos and stuff are not going to do well with the modern customer. I think the reason that it has become so much Viking in Zenits now is because, well, let's say you want to put a 0200 Continental engine in a Zenit. You are actually now the oddball because like, where do I get the baffles again? Mm -hmm. yeah. You mean you want me to mount an oil cooler? How do I do that? Where do I get this oil cooler? You know, you, you want me to have make hoses for that? I mean, I've never made hoses for anything type of thing. So, so having all that done and showing people how to do it is, is where it's at. We like to see a customer receive an engine for their airplane that they've worked so hard at and then two weeks later they, it's on the airplane and they're starting the engine you know so from what you were saying like f partially completed projects and they're they're not you know they used to die away people would build half their plane and then they would give up on their dream because mm -hmm. it just became overwhelming between family life and trying to do all this and build a plane and getting frustrated and the fun will go get out of it and once the fun leaves then when you get to the engine, you're frustrated, and the engine company is gonna take all that frustration. So, so the smoother you can make it for them at that point, so they can actually see a milestone in a matter of a few days, and they have a running engine, that's very important for a builder. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the record out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com.